three, two, one. Back ship. Please tell me the rings. Did they work? They worked wonders. There is a very famous ring in Germanic and Norse mythology, a ring of invisibility, which is used obviously for terribly covetous purposes. And that is, I think, the prime source of Tolkien's inspiration for the rings. This notion that the ring is a miniature metaphor for the earth. It's round, it's circular, it has no beginning, no ending, it encompasses everything, including power. And it seems that that was a logical extension of all of this lore that Tolkien so loved so deeply. Season two holds a big story. I'm looking forward to pouring some of that molten ore. Right-handed or left-handed? Right. OK, great. For elves that are ambidextrous. You can do everything. <laughs> the crafting of the rings is such a core part of the lore. I'm hugely excited for that. The rings have been forged. Gladiel's about to get her own ring. To actually engage with them and ask those questions, what do they mean, what do they do, what does it do to other people, is a creative journey. What is it? Is it Elrond? Some sort of invitation from Lord Celebrimbor. We're creating the rings. The rings of power, the seven that's given to the Dwarf Lords. It's exciting to see what effects the creation of these rings will have on us. Seven rings, and bound within each power. I also feel this instinct that something's not quite right. These rings start to work on the subconscious, ultimately for evil rather than good. I know where it's going. For those that don't, I won't ruin it, but I know where it's going. It's a very exciting, dark journey to embark on. I know you believe this ring is deceiving me, but I believe it is guiding me.